Ever since the moment that our universe was created by the Big Bang more than 13.7 billion years ago, scientists have never stopped searching for answers in the process of our formation. For all the mysteries that have emerged regarding the black void that seems to surround us, that did not stop our minds from imagining the most terrifying aliens, TV shows, and science fiction concepts. Yet, as scientists venture on into the void day by day, they are only shedding more light on what is out there in the vastness of space. So today, here at Unexplained Mysteries, we'll be taking a look at some of the latest advancements in the field of space exploration. Scientists find liquid water inside a meteorite. For hundreds of years, scientists have yearned to find more examples of liquid water beyond Earth. Extraterrestrial liquid water might point to environments hospitable for our own species, or perhaps species totally unknown to us. In our own solar system, there are a number of examples where water exists. From Saturn's moon Enceladus, as well as the planet's own icy rings, to both liquid and frozen water on Mars, there seems to be a lot of water out in space. Yet, a recent study has shown that liquid water exists on meteors, something that scientists were not sure could happen. The meteor in question hit Earth on the 22nd of April in 2012 and was collected in fragments just two days later. And after years of examination, a 2021 report has shown that inside the meteor, named Sutter's Mill, exists liquid water within minerals. This type of meteorite is known as carbonaceous chondrites, but until now, scientists have not discovered any form of preserved water within their structures. Upon examination, researchers were able to find small collections of liquid water that were full of carbon dioxide. It is believed that the meteor has existed since the early period of our solar system, which gives us an excellent view of what matter was like early in its history. Using microscopes, the team were able to find absolutely tiny minerals housing even smaller pools of liquid mixed with CO2. There is a possibility that meteors such as this helped to bring water to Earth in the first place. Speaking of the findings, study author Akira Sushiyama said that the discovery of water in this space rock gives the direct evidence of dynamic evolution of the solar system. Formed over four and a half billion years ago, it was only in 2012 that the ancient rock hit Earth in the Sutter's Mill Gold Rush site near Sacramento, California. This could contribute evidence to the theory that Earth gained water thanks to celestial bodies falling to Earth, with water trapped inside them. The theory would posit that these carbonaceous chondrites that may have crashed to Earth and been a source of our planet's water. While the amount of liquid water found in the present study is very small, Sushiyama said, the study gives the evidence for the presence of such liquid water. In other words, they added, if the water in those minerals contributed to Earth's water, then it can be considered the parent of Earth's water, and the meteorites hosting these minerals therefore the grandparent material of Earth's water. Astronomers observe two stars so close to each other that they will end up merging into a supermassive star. There are so many questions out there in the universe for us to attempt to answer, and for each one, we have multiple guesses, theories, models, and explanations, all feeding into one another as we try to unravel some of the mysteries in our universe. As we try to unpick each question, we conduct studies and gather data to shed some light on the puzzle. It goes without saying just how exciting it is when a study can do just that, shed some light on the matter and confirm that what before was purely theoretical could in fact be true. One study in 2014 did just that. A study of the binary star system NY Carmela Pedalis, published in the scientific journal Astronomy and Astrophysics in 2014, revealed that most of what are referred to as massive stars out there in the universe are formed from combining with several other smaller stars. Before this research took place, this had been the leading theory and it only becomes more exciting when we confirm aspects of our understanding. Within our galaxy, the Milky Way, most of the stars do not stand alone, but rather as part of binary systems or multiple systems. 
A binary star system consists of two stars that orbit one another. They are gravitationally bound, meaning they exist together as a unit. Some of these systems with two or more orbiting stars in our galaxy are undergoing a process known as eclipsing, meaning they experience transits and eclipses when observed from down here on Earth, due to the direction their orbital plane faces in relation to our planet. When there is an eclipse in these systems, what happens is as the stars move in front of one another, they momentarily block the light of another star. When we look at this happening from Earth, our equipment can spot a change in the brightness of these stars, letting us know what is happening. The 2014 publication focuses in on just one of these massive eclipsing binary star systems, MY Camelopardalis, otherwise known as MY Cam. MY Cam is one of the largest star systems we know of, thanks to the research gathered through observations from the Cala Alto Observatory by astronomers at the University of Alicante, the Astrobiology Center of the Spanish National Research Council, and the Canaries Astrophysics Institute, alongside a handful of amateur astronomers. As evident from the breadth of this team, this study had all hands on deck. The research paper suggested that MYCAM is so large as it is composed of two other stars. These stars are named as spectral type O, o meaning they are blue, very bright and have a sky-high temperature. Spectral types classify stars based upon the light they emit, in both color and the spectral lines observed in their light. Type O is the hottest of the seven categories, with the hotter lights appearing bluer to our eyes. Each of the two Type O stars are very close to each other and rather large. One of the stars has a mass 38 times greater than our Sun, and the other has a mass 32 times greater. To provide some perspective, these stars orbit one another in just 1.2 days, making it the shortest known orbital period for this type of star. This has led researchers to suggest that these stars were first formed into this binary system in a very similar manner to what we can observe now, placing them almost in contact with one another when they were formed. It was thought that the stars would merge into one object more than 60 solar masses before any notable developments or evolutions would take place for either of the individual planets. The case of MYCAM seems to suggest that two stars can grow to be very large, substantial massive stars before forming into one supermassive star. It is not overly common in the universe to have stars like our Sun. Our Sun moves alone in the galaxy. There are no other stars to accompany it, simply the Sun and its planets traveling through space. Although this was the first system for us to become familiar with on Earth, most of the time there is at least one other star along for the journey. Stars that form binary systems like these orbit one common center of mass. MY Cam, found in the constellation of the Giraffe, has become one of the best examples of these systems, due to the bright nature of one of the stars, Alicante 1, which has been named a stellar nursery by the researchers at the University of Alicante. Though for now, these stars remain entirely distinct, theories suggest that they could one day form into one. As researchers began to study MYCAM using theories such as the Doppler effect and equipment such as the Focus spectrograph, astrophysicists were able to measure the velocities of these stars. Similarly, we were able to understand more of the characteristics and properties of the stars, from their temperature and size to an in-depth analysis of their spectra. Not only has this research managed to confirm aspects of theories and edit our predictions in the formation of massive binary star systems, but we also have been able to apply spectra techniques and uncover more about these stars individually too. This work is incredibly fascinating, especially as our understanding is proving to be somewhat on the right track. Black hole jets might be sending trio of high-energy particles at Earth. The infinite mass of space has caused lots of problems for scientists seeking answers to a multitude of questions, including the long-standing mystery with a likely simple solution of where do the ultra-high-energy cosmic rays, high-energy neutrinos and gamma rays constantly raining down on Earth come from? Even though the answer itself might not be too complicated, 
Finding that answer is a much harder challenge, as the intricate void of space makes it an almost insurmountable challenge to attempt to track down the source of these common particles, which produce millions of times more energy than has ever been available on our own planet. All scientists have been able to determine is that these strange beams originate outside of the Milky Way, but we might be getting one step closer to the answer at long last. Recently, two researchers collaborated to create a mind-boggling model that proposes that the source of not one but all these incredibly high-energy rays is none other than supermassive black hole jets. They were led to this conclusion by the observation that, although each of these three types of particles may seem unrelated at first, they all actually produce similar amounts of power and possess what appears to be related intensities, prompting researchers to search for an unlikely solution that would include all three rays, which led them to the black hole jets. Kota Marasi, an assistant professor at Penn State University and one of the developers of this new model explained that the new model suggests that very high-energy neutrinos and high-energy gamma rays are naturally produced via particle collisions as daughter particles of cosmic rays and thus can inherit the comparable energy budget of their parent particles. It demonstrates that the similar energetics of the three cosmic messengers may not be a mere coincidence. This research is groundbreaking, as it carefully analyzes the individual components of all three of these particles in order to shed some light on what is currently a very dim topic. This newly proposed black hole phenomenon is described as multi-messenger emission and refers to the strange myriad of phenomena that is observed in cosmic events such as these supermassive black hole jets. This question is one that has puzzled astronomers for decades, and the two researchers were able to offer a relatively simple solution, and one that did not rely on observations taken from satellite or telescope images attempting to track the source of these powerful bursts. Rather, they analyzed the intrinsic components of the rays themselves, instead looking for clues within about where they could have come from. These new propositions now can provide a new direction for researchers seeking answers as they attempt to confirm the multi-messenger emission model. If proved true, this incredible discovery could usher in a new age for astronomy as one of the most perplexing and enduring space mysteries could finally be considered closed at long last. But what do you make of these recent discoveries? Be sure to let us know your thoughts in the comment section below and help us grow this community while working to solve these unexplained mysteries. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more videos.